My personal favorite song on Illmatic album is every song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yo, Black, it's time, bro. My name is DJ Premier. I am a producer, DJ, artist, and hip hop junkie. My name is Faith Newman. I was executive producer of Illmatic. The Chocolate Boy Wonder Pete Rock, Soul Brother Number One, Mount Vernon, New York. Lost Professor, producer. My name is Minya O, oh, and I wrote the review of Illmatic in 1994 in The Source magazine. I first heard Live at the Barbecue, I guess, when everybody else did, you know, on the main Source album. And I flipped out over this kid, Nasty Nas. I went down the hall to my boss and I said to him, you know, if you don't let me sign anything the entire time I'm here, you must let me sign this kid. And I was so passionate about it that he just said, okay, let's, let's do it. And that's how it all started. Live at the barbecue, you know, that did it for me. That's made me want to jump on board with Large Professor. You know, when he came to me and asked him to be down with this, this nomadic project. We kind of supported what Nas wanted because we knew he was a serious artist that knew what he wanted to do. Like, Nas had a big hand and like, yo, check this out. Like, nah, we're going to throw my pops on the end, you know, playing the horn type thing, you know what I'm saying? So he was very much involved with, like, the picking of the music and the tone of it and everything like that. He'd go through beat after beat after beat after beat after beat. Wasn't feeling it, wasn't feeling it, wasn't feeling it until he found that one thing that he liked. And when we were recording Halftime, that was Nas's first go-round at making a solo record. He was nasty, Nas. Now, he had the studio time, because prior to that, we were working on other people's studio time. It was like he was at the helm now. There were five producers instead of one, and most hip-hop albums up to that point had one producer, and this had kind of the best of the best of New York. I know that I never felt that way before or since about a single first-time interaction with an album. You have every single tremendous producer stepping their game up, not just like, oh, this is a gig, I'm just doing this as a favor, but this was their like passion project for Tip and Primo and Large Professor. My favorite song was uh, New York State of Mind. I could, I could honestly say it. The intensity and just the pureness, like it captured the whole New York like perfectly. As a fan of Nas, as a fan of Prem, as a fan of hip hop, like it was just like, yo, this is crazy. The day we did New York State of Mind, and he and I found the sample together. Like we're, I'm stumbling around, he's looking at record covers, and we both heard that melody of that that piano. We both said, like, the, it's something about when something catches you. We all stop and look at the same time when that note hits, and when it hit, we, he was like, you can hook that up. I was already like, oh yeah, I was going to whether you said to or not. When he's saying, and so now I'm jetting through the building lobby. And it was full of children, probably couldn't see as high as Avi. So now I'm jetting to the building lobby. And it was full of children, probably couldn't see as high as Avi. Like, that's Ebonics. That's not anything anyone's going to say. Like, you know what I'm saying? They ain't not going to know how to flip that with that Ebonics and all of that shit. It didn't matter, though, where you were from. His words were so vivid. You heard it, and you, you were in Queensbridge. You were in New York City. It's a guy from New York City representing New York City and talking about a place where he's from in New York City. There's lots of stories to tell when you're from the hood. He threw a shine on Queensbridge that didn't exist before. I feel like Illmatic is still undeniably a classic because what other album are people this passionate about 25 years later? It is a work of art, just like uh, Da Vinci or Shakespeare. It just stands alone as like kind of this masterpiece of hip hop. And I think that, you know, in the pantheon of great albums, period, you know, it, it, it ranks right up there. I'd put it next to the Beatles White Album. <laughs> Illmatic stood the test of time, in my opinion. Still number one, still on the mountaintop, can't be knocked off. If we knew what we were doing when we were doing it, I'm telling you, man, it, 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 
it, it was way ahead of its time. You can't avoid soul, and you can't avoid when something just hits you in your heart. It's just unavoidable, and that's not something that's forced. It just has to either grab you or it doesn't. When you can make something that is so personal to you that it actually makes it universal for everybody else, then that's a classic.